starts at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The gap is tightening in the race for the White House. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with the latest in the presidential race just ahead. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, another mild 57 degrees. Definitely do not bring that jacket. I was already warm <laughs> coming into work this morning, but we're going to check in with Mike to see what we're supposed to do for the rest of the day. And good morning to you. It is Friday. It is November 6th, and we've had some fog around off and on a couple of mornings now, but Mother Nature really has her act together this morning fog wise. Oh, yeah, I could definitely Definitely see that. We'll uh, check in with Mike. Yeah, Mike's got more on a dense fog advisory. Yep, it was just issued. It does not include San Antonio, but uh, there are some places. We're already seeing uh, a lot thicker fog this early in the morning than what we've seen the past couple of days. Even going up 35 in toward New Braunfels, got some really thick fog. So nothing in this picture looking off there to the east. Everything looks pretty good. But again, New Braunfels, you're already down to just a quarter mile visibility. Even though there's nothing showing up in Pleasanton, Randolph, Stinson, you just kind of want to be on the lookout because those are some of the spots that that tend to fog up a little more quickly and then more thick fog further off to the east three miles of visibility Gonzalez LaGrange Victoria both down to just a quarter mile and this will get thicker as we go in toward sunrise just before seven o'clock and then also even after that so that's why the dense fog advisory is in effect up until nine o'clock it does include Kamal County all the way down to Wilson County and then to the east of there just that one little kind of chunk of our viewing area, the north, uh, north and eastern kind of quarter, if you will, of our viewing area and visibilities will get down to less than a quarter mile in a lot of spots. And just because there's not the dense fog advisory for Bear County doesn't mean obviously we're going to not see fog. We probably will as the morning rolls on. Temperatures once again are very consistent mid and upper 50s, although close to a normal low temperature, maybe just a few degrees above that mold is on the low side and will stay basically steady at this point right around where you are because we got all that humidity so we can't drop down below that some patchy fog around and again the dense fog advisory and then a high today up to 80 so a little bit more pleasant tomorrow morning humidity is going to come back up here we're still looking at a front not a big one but at least a front by next week details coming up time saver traffic right now on this friday here's officer nick salise good morning sir good morning mike good morning everyone good to be here on this wonderful friday morning okay we had a one accident right now this looks like it's going to be on the on ramp from 410 eastbound to 281 that flyover ramp there it looks like there's a stalled vehicle now on the right lane blocking the right lane just be careful there's a flare line going up right now sapd did leave the scene and hopefully this vehicle can get out of the roadway very soon all right, trans guy time. Let's take a look at 37 in Jones right now on the southeast side. Looking really good. Both north and south lanes flowing very smoothly. If you're going down 37, expect a smooth ride to work. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. This morning, the gap is tightening in the race for the White House. According to the Associated Press, former Vice President Joe Biden is now leading in the state of Georgia by just over 900 votes. Meanwhile, we're hearing from the president for the first time since election night. That's right. The AP still has the electoral count sitting at 264 from the former vice president, 214 for the current president. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with more. After two days behind closed doors since election night, President Trump emerged in the White House briefing room Thursday, making unfounded claims. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. The if president's baseless comments votes. coming as vote counting continues, and his lead in crucial battleground states is shrinking. I've already decisively won many critical states, including massive victories. In Arizona, Trump gaining some support, but still behind. And in Pennsylvania, where he's ahead, the president's lead now down to less than 20,000 votes. If you count the illegal votes, they can try to steal the election from us. Legal experts calling the president's unfounded accusations of voter fraud dangerous. It's very worrying because there's no doubt that a lot of people who support him will think he must be telling the truth. It's really damaging to American democracy. Biden tweeting overnight that no one is going to take our democracy away from us. America has come too far, fought too many battles, and endured too much to let that happen. Some Republican lawmakers also rebuked the president's remarks on Twitter, but Trump's staunchest allies also coming to his defense on Fox News. How is it possible that someone claimed that Joe Biden would win and not one Republican member of Congress lost re-election? I ask everyone to stay calm, all the people to stay calm. The process is working. The count is being completed and uh, we'll know very soon. 
The Washington Post is saying Biden could make a major speech as early as today. They're also reporting the Secret Service plans to ramp up protection of the former vice president in anticipation of a possible win. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Here in Bear County, another slight dip in our seven-day average of COVID-19 cases. It has dropped by one for an average of 212. Three new deaths were reported and 195 new cases were reported in Bear County. And another increase in our hospital numbers. The last time we were under 200 patients in the hospital was more than two weeks ago on October 20th. While we do have 259 COVID-19 patients in the hospital right now, the mayor also mentioned the number includes 42 patients from El Paso, which is dealing with overwhelmed hospitals there. Of the total hospitalizations here, 111 are now in the intensive care unit. 56 are on ventilators. Right now, it's just about 436, 57 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, praying for forgiveness. A preacher of a popular church fired after admitting to being unfaithful in his marriage. And next, why the Secretary of Defense say he may be out of a job soon. And taking a look out with live cam, 57 degrees, no fog in that shot, but I guess a couple of foggy areas. So want to watch out for that. We'll check in with Mike about that advisory and also what we can expect for weather wise this weekend. Welcome back. President Trump's defense secretary may be soon out of a job, but Mark Esper said to be prepared for that. Several defense officials say Esper is attempting a graceful exit from his position if President Trump decides to fire him. He has a resignation letter prepared and could be gone within days, no matter how the election turns out. The officials say Esper's plans are no secret within the Pentagon and that he would like to stay in the job as long as he can. But... His relationship with the president has apparently deteriorated to the point that he is aware that might not be possible. And more flooding damage from Ada and Guatemala this morning. A water-soaked mountainside in the central part of the country slid onto a town burying homes and leaving at least 25 dead. Two other slides have killed at least 12 more. Ada weakened to a tropical depression and was about to re-enter Caribbean waters, but a week of torrential rain set off the deadly landslides and flooding from Guatemala to Panama before the massive map massive slide. At least 20 deaths had been attributed to the storm across the region. Twitter has permanently suspended Steve Bannon's account after he made a tweet about beheading Dr. Anthony Fauci. The former White House strategist made the inflammatory comments as it became more apparent President Trump may lose his re-election bid. Bannon made the comment in a podcast video posted on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. He also said FBI Director Chris Wray's head should join Fauci's on Pike's outside the White House as a warning to federal bureaucrats. Twitter said it had permanently suspended the account of Bannon's War Room podcast for inciting violence. YouTube and Facebook removed the video, but only after it had been viewed almost 200,000 times. And time now is 441 and 57 degrees. Still ahead, a Sagi man expressing gratitude to first responders after surviving a lawnmower fire. Also next, a celebrity preacher finding himself out of a job after being fired from a popular church. Welcome back. It's 444. This morning, a celebrity preacher has been fired by his church after admitting to being unfaithful in his marriage. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, praying for forgiveness. Who could use a little bit more wisdom? He's known as the rock star pastor Carl Lentz, making Christianity cool for millennials and celebs alike. Do you like being called the rock star preacher? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, so did I just offend you? I'm sorry. No, not offended at all. I, I mean, it, it's just uh, an honor to have anybody even care about what we're doing. The one-time spiritual advisor to Justin Bieber, who reportedly provided guidance to the singer about his relationship with Selena Gomez in 2017. I just want to love Carl more. And even baptized him. But this morning, Lentz finding himself out of a job, fired from the wildly popular Hillsong Church for what the church described as ongoing discussions in relation to leadership issues and breaches of trust, plus a recent revelation of moral failures. So what is Lentz saying about his actions is all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, a Seguin man survives a horrendous lawnmower fire. He had just moved his young family to Texas from Illinois and started a new job. Marilyn Morris with a story of fire, gratitude, and a stranger he calls an angel in a red truck. It makes it a lot harder to 
Every step hurts. It's very painful, you know, I can barely walk. But it is a walk Marcus Coulter says he makes with God one step at a time. Oh. His pain is palpable. A third of his body is badly burned, his foot, his legs, his backside. Still, he's grateful. I'm grateful because I still have my hand yeah, and I have life. October 12th was Coulter's first day on the job mowing grass in New Braunfels when he says his commercial riding mower slid into a ditch and tumbled, gasoline soaking him. I was in the high, high grass, crawled away from it, and then stood up and boom, there was a gigantic explosion and I was on fire. I noticed my pants were on fire, my boots were on fire, my shirt was on fire. Struggling to rip his flaming clothes off. I almost gave up, you know, because I was, I was scared. He heard a voice. This guy, I don't know who he was. It was just some fellow in a red truck. That guy was an angel. He was sent from above to come and help me because if I didn't have somebody to help me get that stuff off, I would have been in big, big trouble. After three weeks in Bamsey's burn unit, Coulter faces a tough recovery, physically and financially. But he's grateful for his wife and four kids and the kindness of friends and strangers, especially the man he calls the angel in a red truck. Thank you. I don't know who you are. <laughs> I don't know where you are, but thank you, guy from New Braunfels. You know, thank you so much. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm glad he's okay. And, and yeah, thank you to whoever stopped to it's help Marquise. Touching story. No doubt about that. Let's check on traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. I think he's awake and he's got the latest. <laughs> I'm he awake, is. Mark. Thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Things are looking good right now. A lot of green on the screen here. No accidents. So if you are headed to work this morning, expect a smooth ride. Let's go straight to Trans Guy. 35 at Randolph right now. Looking good there on the northeast side. 1604 at Kyle Seal. Flowing smoothly east and westbound lanes. And 281 at Nakoma near the airport. Looking good right now. Thank you, Nick. If you're worried about all the division in the country right now, have no fear. Mike and I wore the same necktie today earlier. <laughs> um, I always bring a backup just in case, but we uh, started out wearing that same really? tie. Really? Oh, that would have been fine. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie, that's what happens when you do a two-for-one sale and give gifts. Okay? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning I was the not gift to the giver. Same, not to the same people you work with, okay? Right. That's okay. That would have looked really cute. That's girl, awesome. All right, so you've got a candy corn. You what she said? What? It would have looked cute. What, us dressed like? Like yes. twins? Yeah. Some, some folks like that twinsy look. Yeah. <laughs> look at Mike's face. No. Hi, quick. Yes. Uh, anyway, yeah, I love that description. It looks like a giant candy corn going down on the horizon. Beautiful sun uh, sunset yesterday. Sunrise today. Well, it's probably going to look a lot like it did yesterday, which in many locations was not that great because we do have. Now, first of all, got clear skies as of right now, but. That was the same situation at this time yesterday, and then the fog uh, really started to kind of thicken up in places, and those low clouds also moved on in right around sunrise yesterday morning. Visibility in and around town, good. Go up to New Braunfels, and you know you drive up 35, and you're going to start to run in almost a, a wall of fog as you head up uh, 35. Same thing going off to the east, half mile visibility, Lagrange Quarter at uh, Victoria. Nothing out to the west yet, but we also saw a little bit of fog developing, say around Carrizo Spring even uh, Uvalde yesterday morning once we got into right around sunrise and just after that. The dense fog advisory doesn't include Bear County, but New Braunfels going up uh, 35, 10, and then off to the east a little bit. And this is up until 9 o'clock this morning. Visibility, as you saw in places, is already down to less than a quarter mile. And we'll continue to see that thicken up. And even, yeah, I keep referring to yesterday, but at one point, you know, visibility in some places was uh, zero. And then 15 minutes later, it's back up to four or five miles. So that may happen again this morning where it just goes back and forth for the next couple of hours. Temperatures, yeah, we're closer to normal, uh, right around mid 50s, maybe a couple of degrees above normal as of right now. A lot of humidity relative to these temperatures, and that's why in many spots we are seeing some of that fog with these dew points up into the 50s. And dew points, we get a little bit of a break tomorrow. There's a slight little 
Slight little trim of the uh, humidity tomorrow morning. Temperatures will be down a couple of degrees. Then we go back up into Sunday and Monday as well as Tuesday. However, look at how the humidity is going to be dropping off by the middle part of next week. There is a front that's going to move on through here. Now, this is not a big old, you know, gangbusters type front, but at least it is going to trim temperatures slightly. And as you saw, it will get rid of some of that humidity. The interesting thing also, I mean, it's relatively speaking, pretty warm around most of the country. I mean, it's 49 degrees right now up there at uh, International Falls. So forecast today, this morning, you're going to be dealing with some fog in places, especially east of 281, but there may still be some patches of fog in and around town. 75 degrees today at noon and then a high temperature up to 80. Call it mostly sunny skies. Still a few of those clouds kind of hanging around here. And tomorrow we're down a little bit mid 50s, slightly drier air, a little more comfortable in the morning. Then the humidity is going to come back up, especially well, actually starting tomorrow late in the day and on Sunday, make it up into the low 80s and low temperatures mid 60s going into Monday, Tuesday. Hopefully we squeeze out a couple of showers. I really wouldn't count on too much on Tuesday and then at least a little bit drier, cooler as we go into the middle of the week. Looking forward to that tiny cool front. Yes, tiny. Right. <laughs> any, any little bit of trim and humidity is good. So Thank by you, the way, Mike, Mike nice yeah. tie. Thank right you. now, 451, 57 degrees for the record. <laughs> Up next, after spending weeks in theaters during the pandemic, Christopher Nolan's Tenet is finally coming to home video. Let's check out all your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, eight, nine, five, fireball, eight, daily four, six, zero, two, four, fireball, nine. Cash five, eight, 11, 15, 26, 28. And your Texas two step, four, six, 18, 19, bonus ball, 15. Christopher Nolan's Tenet is finally coming home. Plus, we now know the latest artists that are going to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It's good with fists for a diplomat. The only major Hollywood blockbuster released since the start of the pandemic will soon be available to watch at home. Christopher Nolan's Tenet will start streaming on demand December 15th, when it will also be out on Blu-ray and DVD. Tenant has earned about $350 million worldwide, but just under $54 million of that has come from the U.S., where it debuted September 3rd. My boy doesn't have to answer to you. And we don't have to answer to you. New in theaters today, Kevin Costner and Diane Lane star in Let Him Go. They play parents mourning the loss of their son, who set out to find their only grandson. It's not the first time they've portrayed a married couple. We saw them together on screen as Superman's parents in 2013's Man of Steel. Every song was the greatest song you ever heard. Tomorrow night, it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Whitney Houston, Nine Inch Nails, The Notorious B.I.G., and more part of this year's class. The special on HBO is normally a cut-down version of the ceremony from earlier in the year. That didn't happen because of the pandemic, so this year it's a taped special featuring all kinds of musicians and stars. And a big birthday today for four-time Oscar nominee Ethan Hawke. He's 50. While La La Land Oscar winner Emma Stone is 32. And that's, why they need us. and that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 4.56 and 57 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, former Vice President Biden gets closer to 270 electoral votes as he gains on President Trump in key states. And after this week, you may need some tequila. We're going to tell you about Elon Musk's new Tesla tequila just ahead in Tech Bites. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And making headlines this hour, a pickup takes out a pole near St. Mary's University. More details on the crash just ahead. And the eyes of the nation remain on the vote count as the 2020 presidential election hangs in the balance. And a dense fog advisory in effect for parts of our area. Mike will tell us whether that includes San Antonio proper. Good morning. It is Friday, November 6th. Happy Friday. We made it to Friday. We made it to the end of this week. And yes. we are definitely celebrating the fact that it is Friday. Let's get the latest on that fog situation with Mike. Well, it depends on definitely where you are, because if you look outside right now, and by the way, just to the uh, 
Just the left of that, uh, the R right there, that big bright spot. Um, you can see it in this picture. I'm going to uh, show you that in a second. That is the planet Venus, brightest object in the night sky besides the uh, moon. Anyway, right now uh, we are at 56 degrees, very warm, a lot of humidity. You see the dew points at 54, which yes, it's below 60, but relative to the temperature, that means the humidity is very high, 93% as a matter of fact. Now we are going to make it up to 80 once again today, kind of a broken record. We were at, actually at 81 yesterday, but we've been right up there a few degrees above normal each and every day this week. The aquifer, no change from yesterday's reading. Of course, stage one watering restrictions are in place for uh, SAWS customers and mold is on the low side. As far as that dense fog advisory, it uh, covers just our eastern counties. It does not include San Antonio. Here's what some of the visibilities look like as of right now. We're still at one quarter mile visibility for New Braunfels, but in and around town, everything looks pretty good. For the time being, we're probably going to see some of this fog, of course, develop, creep a little bit further westward as the uh, the morning rolls on. But the only uh, spots really reporting a lot of thick fog, New Braunfels, Victoria, some around Gonzales, as well as LaGrange. Again, the uh, dense fog advisory is just from New Braunfels, Kamau County, down toward Wilson County, and then further off to the east up until 9 o'clock this morning. And as has been the case the past couple of days, when we've seen fog, and usually the case, it gets a lot thicker as we go in toward uh, sunrise, which is just about uh, just before seven o'clock. So morning fog, mostly sunny. Once again, up to 80 today. Cooler start just by a couple of degrees tomorrow, uh, mid 50s, mid to lower 50s, maybe then sunshine and it'll be warmer and more humid going in through the rest of the weekend and going into the first part of next week. Kind of a warm start. Then a weak front comes through on Tuesday. It'll knock temperatures down a little bit at least shave off some of this humidity. Details on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis. What's going on uh, right now? Not much, Mike. Things are looking good out here. No heavy pockets of traffic anywhere in the city. So if you are headed to work, you're going to get there fast today. All right, drive times eastbound 151, 1604 to 90. You got a nine minute ride. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to I-35, 11 minutes. So still really good times there. All right, outside right now, 1604 in Kyle. Still, that's looking good. 281 in Nakoma near the airport flowing very smoothly north and southbound 281 at Hildebrand going south from there. That looks great and we'll do one more 37 and I 10 two cars on the roadway. Mark Stephanie back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police and an elderly man was killed while trying to cross the street on our city's southeast side. It happened at the intersection of Pecan Valley and Goliad just off I-37 around 10 o'clock last night. SAPD says the 75 year old was crossing Pecan Valley after leaving a convenience store when he was hit by someone driving a dark colored SUV. The vehicle left the scene. Police say the victim died from his injuries. They are looking for those responsible. San Antonio police are trying to figure out what caused a large pickup to plow into a utility pole on the city's west side overnight. Now it happened around 11 p.m. near the intersection of Culebra Road and Vanley Drive. That was close to St. Mary's University. Police say the impact of the truck hitting the pole caused it to break off its base. Police say the driver's head hit the windshield causing serious damage, but police say that driver still managed to run away from the scene. No other injuries were reported. 503 right now the world continues to watch and wait while a handful of battleground states furiously count ballots for the 2020 election. According to the Associated Press, former Vice President Joe Biden is now leading in Georgia this morning by just over 900 votes. And here's the latest on the nation as a whole. The electoral count still sitting at 264 for the former vice president and 214 for the president. CNN's Camila Bernal is in Wilmington, Delaware with the latest. As election day stretches into election week, the closer the race is, the longer it takes. Election workers count ballots around the clock. The fight for the White House centered in battleground states. It's very close in Pennsylvania. The margins between votes cast for President Donald Trump and his challenger Joe Biden razor thin. But as states log more absentee and mail-in ballots, President Trump is seeing the path to his re-election narrow. We were winning in all the key locations by a lot, actually. And then our numbers started miraculously getting whittled away in secret. The president and his team mounting legal challenges in several states, demanding recounts and making claims of voter fraud without offering evidence. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. 
Biden, leading in the popular vote, is projecting confidence in the consequential electoral college count. We have no doubt that when the count is finished, Senator Harris and I will be declared the winners. But while the race is too close to call, Biden asking supporters to stay calm and trust the system. Democracy is sometimes messy. It sometimes requires a little patience as well. But that patience has been rewarded now for more than 240 years with a system of govern governance and that's been the envy of the world. In Wilmington, Delaware, I'm Camila Bernal. Let's take a look at how the election is impacting the balance of power in the U.S. House of Representatives. Right now, the AP calling 208 seats for Democrats, 193 for Republicans, 218 are needed for a majority. And here's how the balance of power looks in the U.S. Senate right now. The goal is to get to 51. Right now, according to the AP, Republicans still have 48 and Democrats have 46. Some high school students here locally are speaking out about the outcome of the race. Gilbert Vasquez, a government teacher at Burbank High School, is utilizing this election to teach students in real time. Now, he tells us that students have learned about battleground states, what each candidate stands for, and they were required to watch the presidential debates as part of his class assignments. Students described how they felt as they are waiting for the final presidential election outcome. I feel very anxious and scared. Me and my friends, we're so, we're so scared, honestly. Like, really close to the point, like, we don't know what's going to happen. And some students that KSET Cruz talked to yesterday say they hope the next president will focus on immigration and jobs. Right now it's 506, 56 degrees. And still ahead, Elon Musk has branched out from rockets and cars into booze with a new brand of tequila. Weird bottle. Plus mm -hmm. we'll look at new research shows the best bedtime routine techniques for getting kids to sleep. And taking a look out with live cam, 56 degrees here locally. We have uh, some dense fog in our area, some things to watch out for. So we'll go ahead and check with Mike after the break. 10 minutes past the hour on your Friday morning. For many families, bedtime is a challenge. Studies show a nightly routine is one way to help kids catch some Z's. And this morning, we'll take a look at what some experts say parents need to do each night to help their kids get to sleep. A good night's rest is important for a child's health and well-being, but how can you help your little one develop good sleep habits? Research has shown bedtime routines are vital for getting adequate sleep, yet only about 65% of families in the United States report engaging in a routine five or more times a week. In a new article, scientists reviewed literature on nightly habits that suggest certain activities may help children with sleep. These include providing a healthy snack, hygiene practices such as bathing and brushing teeth, reading, singing, and physical contact such as cuddling. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that infants under age one get 12 to 16 hours of sleep each in 24 hours. For children one to two, it's 11 to 14 hours. Three to five-year-olds should get between 10 and 13 hours, and kids ages six to 12 should get between nine and 12 hours. And studies show that kids who do not get enough sleep may be more likely to develop high blood pressure, obesity, and even depression. Some other common sense tips to help your kids fall asleep. Uh, limit caffeine, stop use of electronics at least one hour before bedtime, and dim the lights to help them wind down. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. <laughs> we used to play music for my kiddo, too, Aww. every night. You know, like, real light classical music. Right, right. So when the music was on, he knew it was time to... That, that was his routine. Settle in, mm -hmm. yeah. That works, too. Yeah, time now is 512 and 56 degrees. Still ahead, a popular messaging service now creating messages that self-destruct. And we're going to tell you about Elon Musk's latest venture into the world of tequila. Real progress? When you're affected by schizophrenia, you see it differently. It's in the small, everyday moments and in the places you'd never expect. A little sign of hope, the feeling of freedom. And once these little moments start adding up, that's when it feels like so much more. It feels like real progress. 
Caplita effectively treats adults with schizophrenia. And it's just one pill, once a day, with no titration. Caplita can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor about fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, which can mean a life-threatening reaction, or uncontrollable muscle movements, which may be permanent. Dizziness upon standing, falls, and impaired judgment may occur. Most common side effects include sleepiness and dry mouth. High cholesterol and weight gain may occur, as can high blood sugar, which may be fatal. In clinical trials, weight, cholesterol, and blood sugar changes were similar to placebo. So if you're affected by schizophrenia, ask your doctor about Caplita from intracellular therapies. 515 WhatsApp rolling out self-destructing messages. ABC's Moto Kassar Opti has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, making messages disappear. WhatsApp is launching a new optional feature that can zap messages after seven days. The company says either person in the chat can turn the feature on or off. In group chats, administrators will have control. The luxury automaker Bentley says that as part of its new eco-friendly strategy, it plans to be carbon neutral by the year 2030. The changeover will begin with all 2026 models featuring electric and plug-in hybrid drivetrains. Then by 2030, the entire lineup could be fully electric. Finally, Elon Musk is adding a new product to his brand Tesla, Tequila. According to its website, Tesla Tequila is an exclusive small batch premium that's been aged for 15 months. It's available online beginning today for $250 a bottle. Top shelf. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. That was my question. How much for yeah, Tesla? I was wondering too. Well, it is a pretty bottle, I guess, if you, you think you're buying a decoration. Right. Now. If you don't want to drink it, you just want to look at it, right? For, <laughs> just for admire it. No, nah, not worth it. <laughs> Let's check out traffic. Here's uh, 516. What's going on, Nick? Uh, not, right, not much right now, Mark. Things are looking good out in the city. If you're headed to work, you got time for a pit stop, put some gas, because things are looking good. A lot of green on the screen here. Let's go straight to the Trans Guide. 1604 at Kyle Seal, looking really good right now. Hardly any cars on the roadway there. 281 at Nakoma near the airport, the same. Look at that traffic. No traffic at all. 281 at Hildebrand, that looks good. So 281 southbound looks great right now. And 37 at I-10, that's looking swell as well. And we'll do one more here. Let's go. 37 in Jones, southeast side, flowing smooth. Thank you, Nick. Good news out there. Uh, a lot of fog, uh, or a lot of, you know, blockage on yeah, your look, picture for yeah, well yeah this you. was from yeah. yesterday okay. and if from you yesterday. remember uh, all of a sudden it was right around sunrise and we had those low clouds that slid on in here and actually at one point you could see above the clouds and pretty much this situation there's the the clear skies right above the uh, tower of the americas and then it was just kind of stuck in that low cloud layer even our uh, live cam this one and it is well you can see some of those clouds along the horizon where some of the fog is way off to the east but it this camera, which is obviously on top of a building a couple of hundred feet up, you could see right over the cloud layer that moved on in here. So that's a possibility again this morning, uh, even though we're not seeing anything as of yet. Still quarter mile visibility in New Braunfels. So there's that uh, kind of the, the wall, if you will, of low clouds, fog off to the East Gonzales, three miles, quarter mile at uh, LaGrange. Nothing in town, but and we got to watch out as we approach sunrise in about the next uh, hour and a half and a couple of hours or so when we'll start to see some of this fog get a little bit uh, thicker. Dense fog advisory. It's from New Braunfels down into uh, Floresville, Wilson County, and then off to the east right along I-10 up until 9 o'clock this morning. So it will be sticking around even a couple of hours after sunrise. Yesterday we did hit 81 degrees, uh, some mid 80s down to the west and to the southwest. Uh, New Braunfels actually hit 83 and then today Basically the same situation. Normal high temperature is right around uh, 76. So we are going to be slightly above normal again. Enough humidity to kind of notice it out there. Not like it's oppressively humid, anything like that. But again, just, you'll just sort of sort of feel it a little bit. Computer model over the next couple of days. We'll have some morning clouds tomorrow. As a matter of fact, we will see a just a slightly lower temperatures tomorrow morning, but then all that's going to kind of come back in here. We'll get our morning clouds, afternoon sunshine, and that'll be the situation into Monday. Then Tuesday in the morning, this computer model again it tends to broad brush things a little bit, but a couple of showers are going to be possible. Now, obviously, this has some confined well off to the east, but you know there there's a chance for one or two of them out there and. Uh, the odds are not that great, unfortunately. It's just kind of a, a mention of it. And then we'll get a front moving on through. That's going to push that on out of here. So at least that, that front's going to try and 
stir things up a little bit. The nice thing, though, once that front comes on through here, we will start to see some uh, lower humidity by the middle part of next week. Again, not that it's going to be oppressively humid, but it'll be somewhat more fallish by the middle of next week. 75 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies and like I said, up to 80 again today, right there. A few degrees, four or five degrees above normal uh, tomorrow, actually a little bit warmer in the afternoon after a slightly lower start uh, and then 60 on Sunday morning, mid 60s going into the first part of next week to start off. Then that front comes through here on uh, late Tuesday, so we should start to clear out Tuesday afternoon. Steph, have you ever noticed that on this shot, Mike and I tend to stand like we're about to take the collection at church? <laughs> well, I well, I just just saying a, a good reminder about uh, yeah, no shave know. November and that you are well not collecting money, but raising, raising funds, raising, 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 yes, raising yes. funds, very yeah. good cause, raising awareness for cancer in men and also St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Yeah, we're gonna have more on that coming up right here on GMSA. Right now it's 520, 56 degrees. And still ahead in our morning spotlight, Star Wars trying once again with a brand new holiday special, but this time Lego's gonna help out. Lottery numbers, pick three, eight, nine, five, fireball eight, daily four, six, zero, two, four, fireball nine. Cash five, eight, 11, 15, 26, 28, and your Texas two-step, four, six, 18, 19, bonus ball 15. And now, a look at the top stories making headlines in the world of entertainment. CNN's Douglas Hyde has the Hollywood Minute. Please be a cape. Please be a cape. It's a wrap! A new trailer is giving fans their first look at the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special. The animated adventure finds Rey and BB-8 on a time-traveling holiday adventure through key moments in Star Wars history. The fun begins on Disney Plus, November 17th. What do you say, Rez? No, it's not me. People may recognize my face. Borat 2 subsequent movie film is having a very nice run on Amazon Prime. The comedy premiered two weeks ago and is already the second most watched streaming film of 2020, according to Variety. It trails only Lin-Manuel Miranda's musical Hamilton, which debuted this summer on Disney+. Plus. That test you passed? Not everybody does. Welcome to the afterlife. Director Christopher Nolan had hoped most audiences would see his latest film, Tenet, on the big screen. But with the pandemic keeping many away from theaters, it now looks like a lot of them will be enjoying it from the comfort of their own couch. The sci-fi epic is set to debut on 4K, Blu-ray, DVD, and digital rental services beginning December 15th. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Good luck hearing some of that dialogue over the music. <laughs> I promise you. I was just going to mention, Mark already said, so you don't have to see it at home. No, uh, well, well I, may, I may give it another shot, see if I understand it. Yeah, just yeah, to, to, I, I know. need to sl slow things down and try to absorb it better. All right, well. Because I have no clue what happened in Tenet. <laughs> I'll give it a try, maybe. I, yeah. 526, 6, uh, 56 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why the head of the Fed is saying a stimulus package would greatly benefit the COVID-19 ravaged economy. We'll tell you about the latest recall about a, 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 a brand of toddler boots that could pose a choking hazard. And a closer look at how certain food products you use every day could be hurting the environment. Hi, good morning. It's Friday, November 6th. Thanks for joining us. Fog could be a problem for a lot of folks this morning, maybe more than the last couple of mornings. Here's Mike with an update. Yeah, because in places we are starting to see some really thick fog already. I mean, it's had dropped down to about a quarter mile visibility in New Braunfels at least uh, two hours ago. Uh, this view, though, from uh, 410 I-10, everything looks pretty good. Lights are shining nicely there in town and right Oh, just before that graphic popped up, that little dot there in the sky, that is the, the planet Venus. 56 degrees, so close to a little bit above normal, but then you look at the dew point is at 54. So relatively speaking, there's a lot of high humidity out there, and that combined with some other factors is why we are seeing some fog. So still at a quarter mile visibility in Braunfels. Now it's starting to drop down a little bit there in Pleasanton. In and around town, 
it is pretty good as far as visibility goes, but it gets thicker off to the east and it's to the east where the dense fog advisory is up until nine o'clock. So this goes from New Braunfels down toward Floorsville and then the counties off to the east again just until nine o'clock and like the past couple of days within the next uh, say hour, hour and a half right around sunrise, it's going to start to really uh, thicken up and even spread some more. So just because again here in Bear County, because it's not a dense fog advisory doesn't mean you won't see any. There's the possibility there. Uh, mold is on the low side and throughout the rest of today, 75 degrees at noon, about the same temperature profile as yesterday and the day before that 80 for a high temperature, a lot more sunshine around here. The weekend it's going to start off a little more pleasant tomorrow morning. Then the humidity is going to start to come back in here. That's preceding a front next week. What will it do for the weather? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, sir? Thanks, Mike. Right now dealing with one accident. This is going to be there at West Military and 151 at the intersection of West Military and 151. So not on the highway right there at the intersection. Um, this sometimes can get backed up there when people are trying to get on 151, but I think it's still a little bit too early. Don't think it's going to cause too much of a delay. Should be cleared up here in about 20 minutes or so. All right, trans guy, let's go 410 at Crossroads right now. Right now looking really good there uh, 410 at Fredericksburg down the down the road. That looks good. Let's do another one here. What do we have 35 at Randolph on the northeast side flowing smoothly traffic looking good there and we'll do one more here 1604 at Kyle Sill still looking good on those north and southbound lanes. Mark Steph back to you. Thank you, Nick. San Antonio police are looking for a driver who hit a man on the southeast side and kept going. The 75 year old man died as a result of that crash late last night at Pecan Valley and Goliad Road. Our Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters with that story. Now Katrina, do police have any information on the vehicle involved? It seems the only thing they know at this point is that it was a dark colored SUV, one that may have damage now as a result of that crash. The police say the man who was hit had just left a convenience store in that area near Pecan Valley in Goliad. He was crossing the street around 10 last night when the SUV hit him. The 75 year old man died as a result. The SUV kept going, but police hope to put an end to that run and catch the driver. And when that person is caught, he or she will face some serious charges. I just checked in with the medical examiner's office and at this time they are not releasing the name of the man who was killed. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. As Americans wait to see who will win the White House, the U.S. economy is still struggling because of the COVID-19 pandemic. This as the U.S. is dealing with massive unemployment and no guarantee a stimulus package will come anytime soon. CNN's John Lawrence reports. The U.S. economy is showing some signs of recovering from a rough second quarter. The housing sector has fully recovered from the downturn, supported in part by low mortgage interest rates. Business investment has also picked up. But Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, says COVID-19 is still crushing the economy. Overall economic activity remains well below its level before the pandemic, and the path ahead remains highly uncertain. Roughly 751,000 Americans claimed first-time jobless benefits last week, according to the Labor Department. Every state's got the same problem. Every state has massive unemployment claims that it's paid many more, much more than they expected. Powell says a stimulus package would benefit the country, especially those who have lost their jobs due to COVID-19. I think we'll have a stronger recovery if we can just get at least some more fiscal support when it's appropriate, uh, you know, when it's appropriate and the size Congress thinks it's appropriate. Um, I do think that that will likely. But Americans are going to have to wait. Stimulus talks between House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin are at a stalemate. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says a stimulus bill might be considered before 2021. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Researchers claim the models used to predict climate change may not be accurate. An international team of scientists conducted a study published in Science Magazine. They found that past climate information was not included in current studies. The team says that information should be used to ensure accurate predictions. As one researcher pointed out, they believe a model that can accurately simulate past climates will do a, a better job of getting future scenarios right.
The world's most popular puzzle is celebrating its 40th birthday on Saturday. That's the Rubik's Cube. Invented by a Hungarian professor named Erno Rubik, in 1980, it was originally designed as a teaching aid for his architecture students. Now, the puzzle cube, named after its creator, has sold more than 450 million units worldwide. It is estimated that one in seven people around the world have played with a Rubik's Cube. That's more than one billion people to celebrate the 40th anniversary. Tomorrow, Red Bull is sponsoring a Rubik's Cube World Cup, which will be held virtually because of the pandemic. The lockdown has made the puzzle even more popular with the social media hashtag Cube at Home. The Rubik's brand CEO says Instagram and YouTube blogged 50 million different digital posts in September 2020 alone. Seems like it'd be a good year for our 40th anniversary of the Rubik's Cube. Uh, it is uh, definitely, we definitely had the time for it, I Did guess. Did you ever solve it? <laughs> no. No, you didn't either, Mike? <laughs> Mike, you? I figured you'd be the one to do it. No. I solved it with the help of a flathead screwdriver. Uh, well, that's what, and I was just gonna say, that's what my brother did. My brother yeah. took it apart <laughs> and put it back together, and my brother's an engineer now, so. Those suckers are hard to get back together. <laughs> but you can do it. 536, <laughs> 56 degrees. And still ahead, what you need to know about a new recall regarding a brand of a toddler boot due to a choking hazard. And up next, how to know and track symptoms of a disease that impacts more than 34 million Americans. And taking a look out with live cam, dense fog in the New Braunfels area, but not here so much. We're 56 degrees, no jacket when you step outside. You don't need it today. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. November is National Diabetes Awareness Month. This year, the American Diabetes Association's theme is We Stand Greater Than. CNN's Mandy Gaither brings us some important information on the disease that is growing in America. It's a disease that impacts more than 34 million people in the U.S. and one in five Americans don't know they have it. Diabetes. It happens when your body can't control blood sugar levels. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, it's the seventh leading cause of death in the U.S. Diabetes types 1 and 2 are the most common forms. Nine out of 10 diabetes patients are diagnosed with type 2. That's where your body doesn't produce enough insulin or use it correctly and is unable to keep blood sugar at normal levels. With type 1, previously called juvenile diabetes, your body makes little to no insulin. And while there isn't a cure yet, you can stay healthy by managing your lifestyle. A person can lower their chances of developing type 2 diabetes by losing weight, maintaining regular physical activity, and following a healthy diet. Keep an eye on possible symptoms such as frequent urination, excessive thirst, and slow healing wounds. People with diabetes are at higher risk for serious health complications such as heart disease and stroke, so it's important to maintain your regular checkups. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And time now is 541 and 56 degrees for now. Food accounts for a portion of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Up next on GMSA, which foods rank the worst when it comes to harming the environment? And welcome back. It is 544. In your morning consumer headlines, Target is recalling a brand of toddler boots because of a choking hazard. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says these Cat and Jack boots were sold at Target stores nationwide and online for both boys and girls in sizes 5 through 12. Officials warn that the footwear has an elastic lace with a toggle on top of them. It is used to keep out snow, but the agency has received reports of the laces and sometimes the toggles breaking. No injuries have been reported, but the CPSC says parents should keep the boots away from children. Anyone who owns the boots should return them to Target for a full refund. The holiday feeling has definitely hit the uh, chain formerly known as Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin's new holiday menu now available in locations nationwide. Includes three festive latte flavors and a new breakfast sandwich. Dunkin's also redesigned its cups, boxes, and gift cards to fit the holidays. Packaging has the one central word on it, Cheerson. Cheerson combines the word cheers and Dunkin'. The company says it symbolizes coming together in both celebration and appreciation. Maybe it was me not selling that very well. <laughs>
<laughs> it's okay, it's a pretty pink cup. Get a free honey butter chicken biscuit at Wendy's. The fast food chain has been consistently offering amazing deals via their app, the latest being their new breakfast option. The biscuit comes with any purchase from the Wendy's mobile app, and that's not the only deal. They get You can get a free classic chicken sandwich with an, any app purchase, also $2 off any breakfast or premium combo, and free pub fries with a mobile purchase. The biscuit is available during breakfast hours and for a limited time only. Now, Wendy's is trying real hard to get back into that uh, breakfast game. I think so. A lot of restaurants are. Well, when it comes to our environment, there are many factors scientists say contribute to climate change. And one of the most damaging is food. So here's a look at how certain food products are hurting the environment. Before you make your grocery list, you may want to take notes on which foods are the most damaging to our environment. A study conducted by the Natural Resources Defense Council and posted by CNN lists the top 10 most damaging foods. Beef topped the study at number one as the most climate damaging food. It produces the most CO2 compared to all other foods. The study shows animal agriculture is responsible for 14.5% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Emissions. Lamb came in at number two with slightly lower CO2 emissions than beef. The third most climate damaging food is butter. Experts say it has about half of CO2 emissions than beef, but still poses a huge threat to our environment. Ranked at number four is shellfish, then cheese at number five. Asparagus is ranked six due to air pollution. Experts say most of asparagus is grown in the U.S. and flown to other countries, which accounts for higher air pollution pork, veal, chicken, and turkey finished up the list. I'm adding butter to my list right now. Are you really <laughs> adding butter to your list right now? <laughs> I still think that I contend the world is a better place with butter. And a burger. And a burger? Yeah, yeah anyway. we don't agree with it completely. Anyway, moving on, 547, 56 degrees. Nick is here to save us. Mike, we need you to walk away from oh. the wall. <laughs> I, I'm always sometimes it's, it's not your turn, turn Mike. It's, it's, it's Nick's turn. turn. And, then, and then we'll switch out. Nick, do what you need to do. I don't know what to say. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We got two accidents right now. Both Ford, one at 151 and West Military, and then one at 410 and West Military. So this one just came out. It's a major accident, Southwest Loop 410 at West Military Drive on the main lanes there at 410, and then still dealing with this accident on West Military Drive and State Highway 151 there. They're at that intersection at the access road. But let's go to Transguide here and show you this accident on 410 and 151 there. Uh, look Looks like it's on those main lanes. You got SAPD on scene as well as other units there. Uh, don't know how long this is going to be, but uh, definitely blocking one lane. Expect a delay if you are going southbound on 410 from 151. All right, one weekend of no shave November. The whiskers are really coming along, and I want to personally thank uh, Alan, Jennifer, Paul, Marcia, and William, Tony, and Ruth for donating to No Shave November on my page. But I strongly encourage everybody to donate to all the KSAT team members participating in this year's No Shave November. Yes, we want to thank you. So, Marcus. A little modest. He's in the lead right I now. Am. I'm up to yes. 295 thanks to your generous donations, yes. including the O'Kanes, who donated $100. Wow, wow. wow. thank you guys. To my team page this year. For more information, go to ksat.com. You can also look for more on my Facebook page, KSAT. Mark Austin, but uh, Nick's on the team, Mike's on the team, mm -hmm. uh, David hey. Sears, Justin Horn, almost all the guys are mm -hmm. uh, raising funds this year again for cancer. And research. for us, it's bragging rights. Who gets yeah. the most money? Please, not him. He'll brag. Uh, but no, it goes it, it for a wonderful, wonderful cause, helping uh, raise awareness of men's cancers as well as uh, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. All right, yesterday afternoon, fantastic picture. Look at those beautiful blue skies out there and just those three little birds hanging around. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And you can see on the horizon, now in about, uh, what, maybe... 15, 20 minutes or so, we'll start to see the glow if we don't have a lot of uh, low clouds around here, which it looks like. But um, you can see some of those clouds on the horizon right now. Visibility is still at a quarter mile in New Braunfels, although it's improved at Pleasanton and then more fog off to the east. And of course, this is where the dense fog advisory is off to the east. Does not include Bear County this morning. That doesn't mean we won't see any fog. You want to watch it usually around, you know, Randolph, Stinson, a couple of spots that, that sometimes see it early on. Also, even over in uh, 
The Castorville Honda sometimes sees that fog some of the early places. Then go upstairs in the atmosphere, and just like that KSAC Connect picture, very dry air. So we're going to see some beautiful blue skies. This kind of dark shade and then also that brownish shade indicates some bone dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. So once any low clouds or fog gets on out of here, Beautiful blue skies mixed in with a couple of uh, clouds throughout the afternoon. All right, down there in the Caribbean, of course, we're still keeping an eye on Ada, which is uh, technically a tropical depression, but it's moved back into the uh, open waters of the Caribbean, and it should gain some strength into tropical storm strength again, work its way to the northeast, cutting across Cuba, make a little bit of a left-hand turn, head in toward uh, the tip of Florida, right around Miami, go off into the Gulf of Mexico then. However, this is by the middle part of next week, we have a front that's moving on through here Tuesday, late Tuesday afternoon. That's going to set up sort of a, uh, a wall or a, a barricade, if you will. And so that's going to take this storm and then push it off to the northeast. So this thing's all over the place, though, but it will be working. But notice how also, though, it is not... Uh, forecast to regain hurricane strength, but it will still stay at tropical storm strength. And obviously it's going to be a pretty good rain producer for uh, the tip of Florida. For us, 75 degrees, mostly sunny skies today and then high temperature up to 80 with mostly sunny skies. Still a couple of clouds out there, beautiful blue skies mixed in as well with that dry air upstairs. Speaking of dry air, we get a little bit of a break little bit of a break in the humidity tomorrow. So we'll drop down to 54 degrees back up to 82. And we stay in the low 80s through the weekend. More humidity, though, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Then that next uh, week front moves on through and it will be more comfortable, but more fallish by Veterans Day on Wednesday. Very good. I can handle the 80s, though, for the meantime. Yeah, but you'll notice the 80s. Yeah, no jacket this weekend. <laughs> Good advice. Thank you. 552, 56 degrees. And coming up, a video game console launches only happen every few years. And when they do, it's a very big deal for gamers. So up next, we have a preview of Sony's PlayStation 5. Good Friday morning to you. Coming up here on GMA, President Trump launching an extraordinary attack on the integrity of the election. Joe Biden seemingly confident and urging the country to be patient and wait for all the votes to be counted. Our powerhouse political team standing by on the ground, tracking those thin margins in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Arizona. We're going to have the latest from all those spots this morning. You'll see it coming up right here on GMA. Nearly seven years since the launch of its predecessor, Sony's PlayStation 5 has arrived. I've done all of these launches uh, with PlayStation over, over the course of many years, and uh, uh, this really uh, is by far the most extraordinary of any of them. Sony Interactive Entertainment President and CEO Jim Ryan. Uh, we consider PS5 to be really a quantum leap over its predecessor to an extent that it's, it's, a, it's a greater leap uh, than we've ever had in, in any of these generational transitions, whether it's the, the 3D audio capability or whether it's the haptic feedback on the controller, which is uh, a wonderful new feature. We just can't wait for the, the PlayStation community to get its uh, in, their, in their millions to get their, their hands on PlayStation 5. Sony is getting its system out to the gaming public despite the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Very strangely and, and counterintuitively in some ways, I think this exercise has brought us closer as a company and sort of bound us tighter uh, than ever before. Uh, and, and sometimes, sometimes adversity does that. And while launch titles like Spider-Man Miles Morales look incredible, veteran video game industry journalist Victor Lucas says the future could look even better. And what we're going to see, as we always see from console generation to console generation, is developers kind of uh, wrap their heads around what these machines are capable of. And so we'll start to see qualitative improvements that are absolutely going to blow our minds. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, we are still following the latest news around the country in the election cycle. Next half hour, we'll get an update on the presidential race, especially in Georgia, that shows a difference of only hundreds of votes. And Officer Solis is here tracking traffic. Uh, we see some uh, flashing lights out there at 410 and 151, probably construction wrapping up, but we will get an update.
And a good morning to you. It is Friday. It is November 6th. We will get to traffic and weather in just a moment. But first, we are following new developments overnight in Georgia. The Associated Press is reporting that former Vice President Joe Biden is now ahead in the state by 917 votes. Uh, right now, the AP reports the former Vice President has 264 electoral votes, while the President has 214. Let's go ahead and go to CNN's Karen Kafa. In the early hours of this morning, we saw votes come in in the state of Georgia in a suburb of Atlanta and Joe Biden take the lead for that state's 16 electoral votes in a state that has a long time been a Republican stronghold. There are other states outstanding as well, including Arizona, Nevada and Pennsylvania with its 20 electoral votes. And as the Biden campaign watches those votes counted, President Trump continues to air his grievances with the process. In his first appearance since the early hours of Wednesday morning, President Donald Trump came to the White House briefing room Thursday evening to once again claim without evidence that the election is being stolen from him. It's going to end up perhaps at the highest court in the land. We'll see. But we think there'll be a lot of litigation because we can't have an election stolen by by it like this. The president's remarks came as the ongoing vote tally showed margins tightening in states crucial to his re-election bid and his campaign made legal moves. Judges in Georgia and Michigan Thursday rejected lawsuits from Republicans and the Trump campaign alleging ballot counting problems. Former Vice President Joe Biden delivered his own remarks earlier Thursday urging Americans to have patience with the ongoing process. We have no doubt that when the count is finished Senator Harris and I will be declared the winners. So I ask everyone to stay calm all the people to stay calm. The process is working. The count is being completed and uh, we'll know very soon. Meanwhile, Georgia, Nevada, Arizona and Pennsylvania continued their vote counts inching toward a finish that will determine who occupies the White House come January. Hundreds of thousands of ballots have been counted so far today um, and we're in very good shape, um, but there's still still some to count. And a quick update on where the vote count stands in these four states we are eyeing so closely. Pennsylvania has about 163,000 ballots left to count, 50,000 of them in the city of Philadelphia, which the Biden campaign believes would favor their totals in Nevada. They are going to be posting new results from Clark County, the county that includes Las Vegas. Later on today, Arizona has about 204,000 ballots left to count. We'll get an update from them later on this morning. And in Georgia, they believe they have about 10,000 thousand votes left to count statewide. Live in Washington this morning, I'm Karen Kaifa. Now back to you. Thank you, Karen. We'll continue to follow the latest in the presidential election all morning long. But for now, let's check on our Friday weather. Yay with Mike Osterhage. Morning, Mike. <laughs> yay for Friday or yay for me? Uh, both. Both. Oh, both. You, That's right. what she meant <laughs> all I along. Go, as I go fishing for that one. Uh, one thing you're going to have to watch out for, some fog again this morning in places. Obviously, there's nothing showing up in this picture right now. Uh, we've got temperatures that are in the uh, 50s all around the metropolitan area. And again, and no fog is showing up in any of these spots, but you head off to the east and you're going to run into uh, some of that east and northeast. New Braunfels is still at a quarter mile visibility, so these numbers really haven't changed that much over the course of the past couple of hours. That fog showed up very early. Mile and a quarter now, Gonzalez, quarter mile at LaGrange and Victoria. So the only places then a hint of fog is showing up in Catula. Dense fog advisory is in effect up until 9 o'clock. Does not include Bear County, but does include New Braunfels down toward Florida. And then, of course, off to the east. And so we will start to see the fog get thicker now that uh, we're, what, about 45 minutes or so away from sunrise. That's think back to yesterday. That's when the fog really started to thicken up, and that uh, looks like it's going to be the case again this morning. Low amount of mold in the atmosphere in yesterday's count. Temperatures uh, pretty steady this morning, and we are a few degrees above normal. Relatively high humidity out there, and then we are going to be seeing plenty of sunshine. So once we get above all these low clouds right down here and the moisture down here at the surface, upstairs it's very, very dry, so we're going to see some beautiful blue skies. 75 at noon. And we'll continue up to, once again, right around 80 degrees for a high temperature later on today. A little bit more of a pleasant start tomorrow morning, but then the humidity comes back in here. Then we have a front next week. Don't, don't get too excited about it, but at least it'll do a little bit with the humidity and temperatures. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis. And wow, wasn't much earlier, but now it's just kind of lit up. Out yeah, there. Friday morning uh, right there. I got very busy, Mike, all of a sudden. This one just popped up 3540. 
410. So I don't have any information on that one. Do have some good news here, though. Accident on 410 151 has cleared up, but we have this accident now. Fredericksburg Road at Lewis Pasture Drive there by the Medical Center. This is a very major intersection. Hopefully this accident goes away soon so it doesn't cause any traffic build up there. And like I said, this accident on Southwest Loop 410 at West Military Drive, that is now gone. We have some trans guy footage of that there. There's a flare line there. Uh, those flares will burn out eventually, uh, however, but all lanes are open now. All right, everyone, please have a safe uh, commute to work and make sure to wear that seatbelt. Mark Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. There were protests around the country overnight, which you can see under screen. Protesters in Detroit, Philadelphia, and Las Vegas shouted unfounded claims over voter fraud, and many gathered outside of sites where people are currently counting the votes for the 2020 election. And some places like Philadelphia, counter protesters also marched, calling for every vote to be counted. And back here at home, some San Antonio High School students are speaking out about the presidential election. Gilbert Vasquez, a government teacher at Burbank High School, is utilizing the election to teach students in real time. He says students have learned about battleground states, what each candidate stands for, and were required to watch the presidential debates as part of his class assignments. Students describe to our crews about how they feel as they await the final presidential election outcome. I feel very anxious and scared. Me and my friends, we're so, we're so scared, honestly. Like, really close to the point, like, we don't know what's going to happen. And some of those students that KSET Cruz talked to yesterday say they hope the next president will focus on jobs and immigration. New this morning, police searching for a driver after a deadly hit and run on the city's southeast side. Police tell us it happened around 10 last night at the corner of Pecan Valley and Goliad. They say an elderly man walked out a convenience store and crossed the street, but a driver in a dark colored SUV hit and killed him while he was crossing the road. That driver sped off on Goliad and police are still searching for that suspect. Our Katrina Weber will give us some more information coming up in our next half hour. Police are also searching for a driver accused of shooting someone who was walking down a street. They say it happened around 1130 last night in the 1500 block of Paso Hondo. That's near Commerce and Walters on the city's east side. Police say the driver of a car was driving around firing a gun outside of a window. That's when that driver pointed the gun at a man on the street, firing off several sharp shots. One of the bullets hit the victim in the foot. He was taken to the hospital by a family member and he is expected to be OK. Police are still searching for that driver. And this morning, much of the damage cleaned up after the driver of a pickup crashed into a pole. Police say this happened around 11 last night. The corner of Culebra and Vanley, which is right across the street from St. Mary's University. An officer tells us the truck broke the pole at the base and the driver hit his head on the windshield. However, the driver then got out and ran despite his injuries. And police are still looking for that driver this morning. Local health officials are reporting 195 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County and three new deaths. The seven day moving average is now at 212 cases per day. Right now, 259 patients are hospitalized with the disease. 111 are in the ICU and 56 are on ventilators. Bear County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez was at last night's daily briefing and says Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf is self quarantining right now. Rodriguez says the judge came into contact with a county employee who tested positive. Judge Wolf released a statement saying he and his staff will all be tested and that he will work remotely in the meantime. Right now, just about 609, 57 degrees. The U.S. Capitol getting ready for Christmas. We're going to tell you more about the tree chosen to go to Washington, D.C. for the holidays. When it comes to helping our kiddos fall asleep at night, we all know routines are best, but many families, uh, that can be a real challenge. After the break, some bedtime strategies that just might work. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, as you can see, you cannot see too much. Uh, definitely fog in some areas out there, so be careful. For now, we have a decent 57 degrees. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. 612, welcome back on your Friday morning. For many families, bedtime is a challenge. Studies show a nightly routine is one way to help kids catch Z's, but here's what some experts are recommending in addition to that. 
A good night's rest is important for a child's health and well-being, but how can you help your little one develop good sleep habits? Research has shown bedtime routines are vital for getting adequate sleep, yet only about 65% of families in the United States report engaging in a routine five or more times a week. In a new article, scientists reviewed literature on nightly habits that suggest certain activities may help children with sleep. These include providing a healthy snack, hygiene practices such as bathing and brushing teeth, reading, singing, and physical contact such as cuddling. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that infants under age one get 12 to 16 hours of sleep each in 24 hours. For children one to two, it's 11 to 14 hours. Three to five-year-olds should get between 10 and 13 hours, and kids ages six to 12 should get between nine and 12 hours. And studies show that kids who do not get enough sleep may be more likely to develop high blood pressure, obesity, and even depression. Some other tips to help your kids fall asleep. Limit caffeine, like, uh, you know, the cups of coffee you feed them every night. Uh, <laughs> stop the use of electronics at least an hour before bedtime. And this is actually a good one. Dim the lights to help them wind down. Well, yes, check, check, and check. I know right. uh, one time there was a soda can and on the counter, and then it was almost bedtime, and Rooney was, like, walking over there. I'm like, don't nope. you even think nope. about it. Nope. Don't you even think nope. about it. Yeah. You've also had to tell her no to espresso shots, right? <laughs> well, she hasn't discovered those. We're not going to introduce her into that. Okay, maybe no, next no, no. year. 614, 57 degrees. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check in with Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Dev. Not next year. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dev. Right now, have a lot of accidents out there. Uh, primarily looking at one right now. It's going to be Lewis Pasteur at Fredericksburg Road there near the Medical Center. This is a big intersection there, already causing some traffic buildup. And uh, around 6 o'clock, 630 this intersection likes to stall up there so hopefully this accident gets cleared soon so that it doesn't cause too much traffic in that medical center area. All right, drive times. I-10 westbound from the northwest side of 35 to 1604. You got a 12 minute ride. And if you're I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to 35, 13 minutes, so looking good there. Trans guide, uh, let's take a look outside right now. 410 and 151 where we had that accident earlier. Flare line still there, but going out, just one little flare there. It's it's free flowing there in south, uh, bound uh, southwest loop 410. That's looking good. So still uh, looking good there and around the city. Hey, Very Mark. Nice. Yes, sir. Just tell Rooney it's it's like a little tea party because they're little tiny cups no. and you can have a little tea party. So Uncle Mark wants no, to know. No, 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 I know no. what Rooney's getting for Christmas. A little espresso. Hey. No, no, it's just a tea party. <laughs> Stephanie and, uh, and Luis are, are never going to sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will hide that gift for years and years and years. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Nope, nope, anyway, nope. Uh, you don't need anything really to warm you up this morning because it's not that cold out there. You don't need a jacket. Um, kind of a dampish cool, though, because the humidity, relatively speaking, is so high. So we're at, uh, in the 50s right now. Your temperature is pretty much going to stay steady for the next couple of hours. Watch out for some patchy fog, even though there's not much in the in the city proper. You head off to the east. Going to show you that in a second. 80 for high temperature today. A little bit above normal, mostly sunny skies. Great picture. Look at this guy. The possum looking for a little snack there. Do you know they they do they do not. They're actually good to have folks that are the experts say they're good to have in your yard. They eat ticks. They cannot get uh, rabies. Oh, well, there yeah, you go. Because their their body temperature. There's a face a mother can love. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying he wasn't the cutest little fella, but. <laughs> I'm sure it's been said about me. Anyway, uh, beautiful view. We're not seeing uh, any of the clouds forming up yet like we had yesterday, but we still have to be on the lookout for some more of this fog. Notice how the visibility has now dropped down to four miles at Randolph, quarter mile at uh, New Braunfels. That's still kind of stayed the same, but again, we're starting to see it now creep in a little bit further west in toward Randolph. Watch it around Stinson. Watch it on the northeast side up there around 35, 410 as well. Uh, quarter mile visibility in LaGrange and Gonzales is still holding at a mile and a quarter. Dense fog advisory. It does not include Bear County, despite the fact we're seeing a little bit of that uh, fog there around uh, Randolph. And it does include, though, New Braunfels, Floresville, and then off to the east up until 9 o'clock this morning. So it will be sticking around for a while. So the humidity even though we get a little bit of a drop by tomorrow morning, still going to be hanging around here and actually going up. Dew points will be up into the 60s, so you'll definitely feel it by the end of the weekend, Sunday into Monday, Tuesday. 
Then the next front moves on through here. It's not going to be just a, a huge blast or anything like that. It's nothing like the last front that, that came on through, but it is obviously going to knock the humidity, knock some of the, uh, the dew point temperatures down by the middle part of next week. Nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite picture right now. We'll have some of our morning low clouds. And by the way, I was just looking at one of the Transguide cameras over there, 35 at uh, Randolph Boulevard, and it's looking a little fuzzy with uh, maybe hints of fog. Around the country, once again, there's not much going on, although there is this trough developing out there off the Pacific Northwest, and that's what's going to to eventually give us little chance of rain by next week and then also bring that front through. There's not much as far as any cold temperatures around the country right now. There's that low off the Pacific Northwest. So this thing, this whole trough is going to be digging out here to the west and out ahead of it that pulls in the warm air, a little bit more of the humidity for the weekend. Then as this scoots on by, there's that front that comes in here, and that'll be during the day on Tuesday, probably later in the day on Tuesday. That will pull down some drier air, but notice still, it's not like we get these upper level wind lines just coming straight down out of Canada, so it's not like a huge blast of cold air. But we'll take what we can get as far as getting rid of some of the humidity. 75 degrees, mostly sunny skies at noon, and a high temperature today up to 80. A couple of clouds around, but then... Other than some of those few clouds, beautiful blue skies, temperatures are slightly above normal and it'll be a little bit more pleasant tomorrow morning than 82 in the afternoon. Humidity really comes back in here Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. A shower is possible with the passage of that front, not very likely since slightly more comfortable air by Wednesday. My apologies to all the possum lovers out there. <laughs> Just saying. So. Yeah, we're we're getting phone calls right now, aren't mm -hmm. we? Uh, and we, emails phones are ringing off the hook. Yeah. No, you're fine. You're Mike. you're fine. We haven't received calls. <laughs> uh, 619, 57 degrees. Not yet, right? <laughs> and this morning, a celebrity preacher preacher has been fired by his church after he admitted to being unfaithful in his marriage. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Age before beauty? Why not both? Visibly diminished wrinkled skin in just two days. New Crepe Corrector Lotion, only from Gold Bond. Championing your skin. Home is a place to share with the ones you love. And at Stanley Steamer, we love homes. However you choose to celebrate the season, we're here to make sure that your home is clean and safe for the holidays. An official message from Medicare. Did you try it yet? Comparing plans? Oh yeah, this show can change year to year. I found lower premiums. And lower prescription costs. And those new insulin savings. Hundreds of plans, $35 a month. That'll save you money. So, uh, Mark? On Medicare.gov now. Open enrollment ends December 7th. Comparing plans really pays. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. In this morning's GMA First Look, praying for forgiveness. Who could use a little bit more wisdom? He's known as the rock star pastor Carl Lentz, making Christianity cool for millennials and celebs alike. Do you like being called the rock star preacher? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, so did I just offend you? I'm sorry. No, not offended at all. I, I mean, it, it's just uh, an honor to have anybody even care about what we're doing. The one-time spiritual advisor to Justin Bieber, who reportedly provided guidance to the singer about his relationship with Selena Gomez in 2017. I just want to love Carl more. And even baptized him. But this morning, Lentz finding himself out of a job, fired from the wildly popular Hillsong Church for what the church described as ongoing discussions in relation to leadership issues and breaches of trust, plus a recent revelation of moral failures. So what is Lentz saying about his actions is all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. In your tech news this morning, WhatsApp is making messages disappear. The optional feature will zap messages after seven days. The company says either person in the chat can turn the feature on or off. In group chats, the admins will have control. 
Bentley is becoming eco-friendly. The luxury automaker says it plans to be carbon neutral by the year 2030. The changeover will begin with all 2026 models featuring electric and plug-in hybrid drivetrains. It hopes to have the entire lineup fully electric by 2030. Elon Musk is going into a new line of work. The billionaire has created Tesla Tequila. Check out the bottle, folks. According to the website, uh, Tesla Tequila is an exclusive small batch premium that's been aged for 15 months. It's available online beginning today for, ready for this, $250 a bottle. Hmm. Hmm. Meanwhile, the countdown to Christmas is on and the U.S. Capitol now has its tree. The tree harvested in Colorado is a 55 foot tall, 25 foot wide Engelman spruce. Once the tree reaches Washington, the U.S. Capitol grounds and Arboretum team will decorate it with thousands of handcrafted ornaments from Colorado. It is set to be lit in early December. Oh, it's going to be gorgeous. It's yeah. a beautiful tree. Nice shape to it. Yeah, very, mm -hmm. very pretty. Looking forward to that one. Time now is 625 and 57 degrees. We are of course still following the latest numbers around the country in the presidential race we'll get an update in our next half hour and according to some experts it turns out that working a 40-hour week can have a negative effect on your mental health we're going to hear just how long experts say we should work in a week and outside with trans guy the sun is coming up we'll get an update on the situation out there that was 1604 kyle seal and there's 281 at nakoma more to come A man on his way home from a store never made it, all because of a driver who hit him and kept going. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The search is on for that driver. I'll tell you more about it. The gap is tightening in the race for the White House. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with the latest in the presidential race just ahead. Some of you might not be able to see this beautiful sunrise yet because you've got dense fog in your area. Mike will get us updated. We've had a dense fog and advisory in effect for a little while now. Hi, it's November 6. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Let's go straight to Mike and get an update on that dense fog advisory. How are we looking as of 630, Mike? Well, again, it depends on where you are because, boy, there's some beautiful, beautiful blue skies out there. But notice those clouds right along the horizon. This is looking off to the east, and there is some fog, obviously, well off to the east. Temperature still at 56 degrees, dew points at 53. So, relatively speaking, a lot of humidity out there. And we still could see, because remember yesterday, it was right around this time, a little bit after that, we started getting that low uh, deck of clouds that moved on in here. So that's still going to be a possibility even here in town. Now, visibility has dropped again down to Randolph, just under two miles. A quarter mile, it's been holding fairly steady. The fog's just been very thick all morning long for the past few hours up there in New Braunfels, Gonzales, LaGrange, Victoria. A lot of fog as well, a hint of it around uh, Catula. But again, be on the lookout, especially on the eastern edge of Bear County. And been seeing some of the, and Nick's going to have more on this, uh, some of the Transguide cameras going up 35 in toward uh, 1604. Four, even around Judson Roads, looking kind of fuzzy out there. Dense fog advisory up until 9 o'clock for New Braunfels, down through Seguin, Floresville, and then counties off to the east. So it will stick around for the next few hours. Mold is on the low side. And as far as the rest of today, mostly sunny skies. Again, once we get upstairs a few thousand feet, very, very dry air. So we're going to have some beautiful blue skies today mixed in with a couple of clouds. Tomorrow, a little bit of a cooler start. Maybe low 50s, low to mid 50s, just a slightly down. But then we're going to have a lot more sunshine and it's going to start to warm up and get more humid, especially going into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And a weak front's going to move through late in the day on Tuesday. I don't know if it's going to be jacket weather necessarily, but at least it'll trim temperatures and humidity somewhat. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis. And yeah, not much earlier this morning, but now everything's lighten up around there, right? Yeah, normal Friday morning traffic wise, Mike. Yeah. There's some accidents out there uh, still dealing with. We have this one just came out. This is Northwest Military at Wurzbach Parkway there. Wurzbach Parkway, very dangerous. Uh, always watch your speed when you're heading down that uh, parkway there. We're also dealing with this accident here. Fredericksburg Road at Louis Pasteur Drive by the Medical Center. This intersection can get stalled up there when there's an uh, accident. So please expect a little bit of delay in traffic if you are headed in that direction. All right, taking a look outside at the Trans Guide right now, 410 at Callahan looking good. We have 410 at Crossroads. That's also looking good right now. What else do we have here? 410 at Fredericksburg. So right there, all central town, 410 looks pretty good if you're heading that way. And 35 at Randolph on the north side looks great. Mark Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick.
The San Antonio police are out to stop a driver who hit a man and kept going. The 75 year old victim died from his injuries and that crash happened at Pecan Valley and Goliad Road. Our Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters with that story. Now Katrina, what kind of charges could this driver face? Well, we're talking about some serious ones at the very least. Failure to stop and render aid causing death. The police say witnesses told them it was a dark colored SUV that hit the man as he crossed the street near Pecan Valley and Goliad. They say he had just left the convenience store in that area when he was hit around 10 last night. The 75 year old died at the scene. His name still hasn't been released. Police say the last time anyone saw the SUV, it was headed north on Goliad Road. They are trying to find that SUV and the driver right now. And again, that is a dark in color SUV that probably has front end damage. Anyone with information is asked to call the San Antonio Police Department. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, the gap tightening in the race for the White House as ballots in several key states continue to be counted. Right now, you can see former Vice President currently sitting with 264 electoral votes to President Donald Trump's 214. This is according to the Associated Press. Meanwhile, we heard from the president for the first time since election night when he spread some claims about the integrity of the U.S. election. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the details. After two days behind closed doors since election night, President Trump emerged in the White House briefing room Thursday, making unfounded claims. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. The president's baseless comments coming as vote counting continues, and his lead in crucial battleground states is shrinking. I've already decisively won many critical states, including massive victories. In Georgia, a state where Republican Secretary of State runs the elections, a major development overnight. Joe Biden taking the lead and is now ahead. Absentee ballots from Democratic-leaning areas of the state closing the gap. In Arizona, Trump gaining some support, but still behind. In Pennsylvania, where he's ahead, the president's lead now down to less than 20,000 votes. If you count the illegal votes, they can try to steal the election from us. Legal experts calling the president's unfounded accusations of voter fraud dangerous. It's very worrying because there's no doubt that a lot of people who support him will think he must be telling the truth. It's really damaging to American democracy. Biden tweeting overnight that no one is going to take our democracy away from us. America has come too far, fought too many battles and endured too much to let that happen. Some Republican lawmakers also rebuked the president's remarks on Twitter. But Trump's staunchest allies also coming to his defense on Fox News. How is it possible that someone claimed that Joe Biden would win and not one Republican member of Congress lost re-election? I ask everyone to stay calm, all the people to stay calm. The process is working. The count is being completed and uh, we'll know very soon. The Washington Post is saying Biden could make a major speech as early as today. They're also reporting the Secret Service plans to ramp up protection of the former vice president in anticipation of a possible win. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Right now, we want to take a closer look at just how close the race is in the state of Georgia. The AP is reporting former Vice President Joe Biden now ahead of President Donald Trump. At last check, the difference is only at 917 votes. We will be monitoring this race all morning as the latest updates are available. Meanwhile, voters who sent in their ballot by mail also have until 5 p.m. Eastern time today to fix any issues with submissions in Georgia. They will be able to correct issues such as matching signatures by the end of the day, which could impact the outcome because of how close the difference is. But we want to be clear, the race is still too close to call this morning. 917 vote separation there in Georgia. So let's look at some other states still undecided as of this morning. Right now, Nevada, the former vice president leading the president by 11,438 votes. However, election officials in Nevada have not definitively said when they expect to finish counting ballots there.
In Pennsylvania, the difference between the two candidates is a little more than 18,000 votes. Pennsylvania elections officials there say about 175,000 votes left to count in the state with 58,000 in Philadelphia. The Pennsylvania Secretary of State said officials have continued counting the ballots throughout the night and we should expect to get an update today. To North Carolina now, President Trump is leading former Vice President Biden by just under 77,000 votes. WSOC TV in Charlotte reports the state will not likely know the final results of the election until sometime next week. And remember, we still have our election website up and running on KSET.com, where you can track the latest information on the 2020 election. We will be posting updates on the presidential election, as well as recaps on the biggest storylines and races here in Texas and San Antonio. So just go to our main page of our website to learn more. In other headlines this morning, researchers claim the models used to predict climate change may be inaccurate. An international team of scientists conducted a study published in Science Magazine. They found that past climate information was not included in current studies. The team says that information should be used to ensure accurate predictions. As one researcher pointed out, they believe a model that can accurately simulate past climates will do a better job of getting future scenarios right. Key West, Florida is no longer allowing large cruise ships to dock at the island. This week, Key West voted for new restrictions on cruise ships, which bans vessels with more than 1,300 passengers from docking in Key West. There are also limitations on the number of passengers who can disembark from ships each day, and they will favor cruise lines with strong health and environmental records. The Miami Herald reports that the COVID-19 outbreak was a driving concern for those changes. To consumer news this morning, Target recalling a brand of toddler boots because of a choking hazard. These Cat Jack Hamani and Jaren boots were sold at Target stores nationwide and online for boys and girls sizes 5 through 12. Officials warn the footwear have an elastic lace with a toggle on top, which can sometimes break. Anyone who owns the boots should return them to Target for a full refund. And time now is 639 and 56 degrees for now. A lot of things can affect our mental health and working long weeks is certainly one of them. After the break, why experts say women shouldn't work more than 34 hours a week. Six forty three. Most of us have the same routine. We work about eight hours a day, five days a week, but a 40 hour work week may be too much for our mental wellness. As Alicia Beretta reports, experts say working 40 hours a week or more can lead to mental health issues. There are a lot of things that can affect our mental health. And according to one study from the Australian National University, working more than 39 hours a week is detrimental to our mental health. Whether you stick to working eight hours a day or work overtime, you could be doing more harm than good to your body. Researchers found full-time employment can lead to mental health issues, especially when combined with other commitments. Experts say working damages a person's mental and physical health because it leaves less time to eat well and look after ourselves. Researchers found the average healthy work limit for women is only 34 hours a week. The limit for men is 47 hours. Experts say women are given extra demands at work and it's unhealthy for them to work long hours. So ladies, remember to take time for yourself the next time you find yourself staying late at the office. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys will play this Sunday with their fourth quarterback of the season. Dak Prescott, Andy Dalton, and Ben DiNucci all out with injuries. The team has not decided whether the starting quarterback will be former Longhorns uh, quarterback Garrett Gilbert or former Cowboys backup Cooper Rush. To make things even worse, running back Ezekiel Elliott was limited for two straight practices this week because of hamstring issues. And if that wasn't enough, the Cowboys will play the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday. This could be ugly. Kickoff scheduled for 325 Sunday afternoon up in Arlington. Meanwhile, the Texans hoping they will still have a game for the second time in a week. The Texans forced to close their facilities because a player tested positive for COVID-19. Most recent case, a linebacker, Jacob Martin, He's now self-isolating. Game this weekend against the Jaguars. Still on for now. It's scheduled for noon on Sunday over in Florida. Our poor Texas teams. I know. I, reading that Cowboys news, I think uh, uh, Nick was about to gag over there. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's been a tough year to be a Cowboys fan, Nick. 
Yeah, Mark, we haven't been two and six since 2015, so it's not very. Fun I knew you'd mm. know the stats. We got to start Cooper Rush though. He's been in the offense before, and uh, he's a good quarterback. He's your man. He's a backup quarterback. Knows his system. Brought him back for a reason. So. All right, we'll start. see what happens, Coach. Yeah, yeah start yes. Cooper. All right, here we go. A couple accidents out there, but things are starting to slow down in the city, which is good news for a Friday. A lot of green on the screen, and what I like to see is I don't see a lot of heavy pockets of traffic anywhere. So that's always good. It means traffic is flowing very smoothly. Let's go straight to the trans guide right now. 410 at Crossroads. Look at that. Uh, very good there, 410 and Fredericksburg looking good. Looks like it's going to give us a 410 corridor again here. Um, I-35 at Randolph, that's looking good on the northeast side. What else do we have? Uh, let's see, four, uh, 1604 and Kyle still on the northwest side. So all around the city, different spectrums. Things are looking good all around by the airport too. Flowing smoothly. All right, one week into the whisker growing, and we are doing well. Team KSAT right now has raised $345. Yay, congrats. And I'd like to thank all the folks that have donated on my page. Uh, Alan, Jennifer, Paul, Martian, William, Tony, and Ruth, thank you so much for contributing to this year's No Shave November cause. But we'd like you to donate to all our team members. Mm -hmm. For more information, go to KSAT.com, or you can also check out my KSAT Facebook page. It's KSAT Mark Austin. Of of course, after Mark hint, mentions hint, himself. Hint. Or, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I buried the lead. Yes, Wait thank you. But, but votes, we Mark, still have so. time. Like a reminder, yes. you have all month if you yeah. know, you're, you're saving up. And every mm -hmm. little bit counts. We've got folks that have donated anything from $10 all the way up to the O'Kanes, which donated $100 to my uh, page this year. If it all goes to you know, his page, that's fine, because it all goes to some, great, to yes. some great cause. Great so, yeah. hey, back to the Cowboys real quickly and the Texans. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes the Lions not sound so bad, doesn't oh, it? Oh, Mike. <laughs> uh, they'll, they'll still lose on Thanksgiving. How long have you been waiting for that comparison? <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and the Vikings are in the basement in the yeah. NFC North. Oh, Go figure with that. Playoff team last year, yes. Great. With, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, Cousins quarterback. So. Washington quarterback, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, beautiful view. That was yesterday. Fantastic with some of those clouds out there and that great looking sunrise. And uh, depending on where you live, like here in town, now notice how the batch of clouds, there's the horizon, and this seems to have uh, kind of moved a little further to the west, so it seems to be higher up in that picture. So uh, it'll be a minute before we see the actual sun kind of peeking over those clouds, but we've got lots of uh, lots of blue skies on top of that. All right, normal temperatures right now, 76 and 54. Obviously, we are above both of those in just about 10 days or so, kind of splitting the difference between now and Thanksgiving. We dropped down four degrees on each end of the scale, down to 72.50 on Thanksgiving. 69 is the normal high temperature and uh, 46 then go into the month of December and I'm splitting the difference here between Thanksgiving and Christmas four weeks different there 65 by the uh, 10th of December is the normal high temperature and once we get into Christmas 63 and 41 are the normal high temperatures the 30 year average temperatures doesn't necessarily mean that's what we're going to be seeing. Quarter mile visibility now out there at the airport, so the fog has definitely thickened up. Same thing at Randolph. Now, the dense fog advisory does not include Bear County, but obviously we are seeing some of that thicker fog there. Yet, from our camera over there at 10 at uh, 410, everything looked pretty good, but that's a couple of hundred feet up, so that's why we have to look at what's going on down here at the surface. And the fog is definitely thickening up off to the east as well. Pleasanton at seven miles visibility, and that uh, dense fog advisory again for our eastern counties, including New Braunfels, including Floresville. That's in effect up until nine o'clock this morning. Then you go upstairs in the atmosphere, as you saw on that uh, live cam, and it's very, very dry air. This is the water vapor imagery showing the, well, in this case, the lack of moisture or lack of water vapor upstairs in the atmosphere, which is why we've got those beautiful blue skies. Humidity will drop a little bit tomorrow morning, come right back up. It's going to be kind of getting on the humid side Sunday into Monday, Tuesday, and then that's going to drop off once we get into the middle part of next week with that front that's going to be moving on through here. Around the country, we've got this big trough off to the northwest. That's what's going to continue to sort of dig. Now, it's not really pulling down uh, any colder air right now. And as a matter of fact, that cold air, yeah, it's up there in Canada, but it's not going to pay any visits anytime soon around here. May get a little bit up in the uh, Rocky Mountains, but that trough will kind of sit over the western part of the United States and eventually work its way through here. But ahead of it, that's what's going to help to keep us on the milder side going in through, especially the latter part of the weekend and then next week. Then by Tuesday late, that front's going to move on through here. But 
Still, I mean, we're not seeing any huge blasts of that cold air coming down here. We may have another front that tries to move through then by the latter part of next week, about a week from today. 75 degrees, mostly sunny skies at noon. We'll have some of these morning clouds, uh, obviously dealing with the fog. And if there is fog, could make the roads kind of damp as well. And then 80 for a high temperature today. Tomorrow, we start off slightly cooler. Slight being the operative word, get up to 82, and then humidity is really going to work its way back in here Sunday, Monday, and you'll feel those 83s and low temperatures stay in the mid 60s. Maybe a sprinkle on Tuesday, kind of doubt it, and then <laughs> it'll feel slightly more fallish. I'm using the word slight a lot here, a little bit more fallish on Wednesday. We'll take it. We'll yes. take it. Yes. Thank hey, you, Mike. Thank you, sir. Are you snickering. I don't know. It's Friday. <laughs> 651, 56 degrees. And new research is shedding some light on how peer pressure impacts teen drinking. Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we look at what the effects of drinking earlier in life can have on a person. Outside with live cam. Yeah, look at that sunrise. We'll get another look at traffic and the news you need to know before you go on this Friday morning. You're watching GMSA. Good Friday morning to you. Coming up here on GMA, President Trump launching an extraordinary attack on the integrity of the election. Joe Biden seemingly confident and urging the country to be patient and wait for all the votes to be counted. Our powerhouse political team standing by on the ground, tracking those thin margins in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Arizona. We're going to have the latest from all those spots this morning. You'll see it coming up right here on GMA. Well, it is Friday morning, 5 till 7. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Steph. Right now, let's take a look straight at the Trans Guide. 410 at Crossroads looking good. 410 at Fredericksburg looking even better. Uh, traffic flowing very smoothly for a Friday morning. We started with a lot of accidents. Now, no heavy pockets of traffic. If, even, if you're headed to work, expect a smooth ride. Make a pit stop. Stop for some gas or something. Mike? Looks very good in a lot of those pictures and uh, in this one as well. But notice how the, the uh, cloud cover is starting to work its way from east to west. We're looking off to the east right now. Visibility is down to a quarter mile out there at the airport. A third of a mile Randolph, half at Stinson. And roads may be a little bit on the damp side. So do watch it uh, with some of this fog. And there's more fog off to the east. Dense fog advisory is in effect. Does not include Bear County, though, but until uh, 9 o'clock. And uh, we've got temperature. Temperatures that are in the 50s will make it up to 80 later on today with plenty of sunshine. Happy Friday, everybody. Yay! Wow, we made it through the week. <laughs> and thanks to all the folks behind the scenes here at KSAP for putting on some great newscasts this week. Yes, it's been a pretty long week. You guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here at 9.